Okay, everybody. As you can probably see up there on top of the title screen, I'm here to talk about uh, something that a lot of people think I have, but I don't. You see, folks, hold on for a second. Sorry about that, folks. I uh, had to let my cat, you probably, or my, not me and my mom's cat, you probably heard her in the mic. Um, I had to let her back in the garage. But anyway, as you can see again from the, what the title says, you know, I'm here to address this. Because apparently those in the Mobius form, they think I have a vendetta with Ian Flynn. And as you can see up there, it states, I have no vendetta. All right? I have no vendetta. I have no hatred. I have no disrespect. The truth of the matter is, folks, I'm just saying and repeating through, vid through audio, video, or even typing, what I am basically saying is the same thing that several others, and or should I say many others, not just several, but many other fans out there, are saying right now. There are fans like Laser X5, Flyboy Fox, Tross, Natalie, um, if you will, Estro, Miko, uh, the list goes on and on. Doc Fox, you know, again, the list goes on and on. Red Sonic, Red Menace, Toby Barrett. Again, the list just goes on and on and on. And I damn sure know, for, and I damn well know, Not Whole Resident, Richard Kunta, and maybe even James Sullivan, Jamie Tude, are, are not kind of too happy about what Ian has done. You see, it's not me that's initially saying this. It's a lot of other fans that I've mentioned, that I just mentioned by name. You see, these fans don't like what Ian has done. They don't trust Ian's writing. They don't know what to believe with the guy. They don't know if he's just doing this for controversy. They don't know if he's doing it because he wants to create more interest. They don't know what to believe. You see, when it was reported from the New York Comic Con after the, re after the revelation of what Sally was going to look like, like after two thirty after two thirty and going on and going forward, a lot of fans weren't too happy with the idea that going forward this is how she's gonna be. And then when you take a look at let's say two uh issue thirty eight, the preview for issue thirty eight, the cover, you know, one fan over I think I don't know if it's Sonic Stadium or Sega Forms. I think it was the Sega Forms. <laughs> But one fan initially pointed out that Sally's body, on her robotic body on the cover for Sonic Universe 38, seemed a little different. Like it was a different color. Some people may have, some people have stated that it's an artistic license. Maybe it was just a miscoloring. Some have stated maybe it's a new coat. You know, like a new coat of paint or something. We don't know. Um. But again, some fans don't know what to, to think. And when somebody brings up that, questioning what happened to Sally's body on, why is you know, like Sally's bo robotic body now a different color? You know, some will say one thing, some will say the others. My assumption is it's just the force field she's got up that's kind of distorting the uh, brown on the, uh, the, the, the metallic brown, if you will, of her body. So that's just my thought. But again, when fans would hear that, that, go to different sites, read it, and them, them themselves think, oh my God, what did Ian do? Or what did Tracy do? Or whoever's in charge. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with them. And 
and again, I'm just repeating what a lot of the fans that that are against Ian have said. You know, they want to give him the benefit of the doubt. There's no doubt about it. They want to give him the benefit of the doubt. They want to see where he goes with this story arc. They want to see where he goes with uh, Mecca Sally. They want to see where they go Oh, with the whole upcoming silver deal and whatever happens there. You see, they want to know. They want to see. They want to know where he's going to go from there because essentially they, they don't trust a word he says. Now, as far as me, you know, I have no vendetta. I have no hatred. You know, I will admit, I will admit, though, maybe, maybe a part of me is still a little disappointed at the fact that Ian Flynn, you know, banned me from his website or banned me from his message boards. And all I was doing was asking questions. That's all I was doing. Essentially, folks, that's all I was doing was ask, asking questions. I wasn't trying to figure things out, although I will admit, I guess I became very close to figuring a lot of things out that maybe it rattled Ian a bit. I don't know. But maybe that it, maybe there's a part of me that is a little still ups, is still a little upset about that. But you know what? I look at that. I look at it and I say, "Hey, whatever happens has happened. I can't do anything about it." And besides, if I wanted to sign up to his message board, it's real simple. All I'd have to do is go to a place like say McDonald's that has free Wi-Fi, go on my iPod, I'd uh, use a new use a different email address. Sign in like that. And the thing is, he wouldn't know unless I went and used that IP, if you will, which is McDonald's or Starbucks or wherever, or Blue's Cafe here in Patterson. The thing is, folks, I have nothing against him. And again, maybe I'm just a little, a tiny, maybe I'm a little, maybe I'm a little bit upset still that he banned me, but I was just being a fan, asking questions, and kind of guessing what could be happening. And I know some people may say, well, Brian, if you're guessing almost exactly what's going to happen, you're ruining it. Well, it's kind of hard not to guess when the person that's writing the stories makes it almost predictable. And to me, that's why he's doing what he's doing currently right now in the comics, to show that he's not predictable, that he's unpredictable. And you know... And again, and you know, maybe it sounds like, again, maybe it sounds like I do have a vendetta against him, but I don't. The truth is, I respect him for what he's done. I respect him for being the first person out of this fan base that I'm a part of right now to make it to where he is. I respect the fact that he's trying to make the comic interesting again. I respect that. Okay, I do respect that. I don't hate the guy. I don't disrespect him. And I don't have no real vendetta with him. All I'm doing, again, is just voicing the displeasure and the discontent that all these other fans that I've mentioned at the beginning have. Now, I don't know what's going on with the people at the Mobius Forms. I don't know why they feel they need to ban me again. Why? Just because they think I'm saying things out of an, out of out about Ian because I have a vendetta? No. No. What I'm typing... I mean, look. I'm doing everything they've asked me to do. I'm doing everything everybody else has asked me to do. I'm typing up some of my summaries sometimes. Well, actually, I'm using Dragon Natural Speaker to do the typing most of it, to do the most of the typing. But anyway, I'm doing what they're asking me to do, and yet it's not good enough. That's why I do videos like this, audio videos or on-camera videos, because, you know, instead of typing sometimes, you want to vocally let your voice be heard and let them know how you feel. But the thing is, I don't know what the problem is. I don't know if I don't know if they are a bunch of and I, a bunch of and I'm not trying to say and I'm not trying to say this because I have a vendetta against the guy because, like I said, I don't. I don't have no vendetta. I have respect for the guy. But I don't know if they're doing this because, with all due respect to Ian Flynn, and I because I know he listens to these videos from fans like me here on YouTube, but I don't know. If maybe the a bunch of Ian Flynn suck ups, I don't know if the a bunch of Ian Flynn ass kissers. I don't know. 
I don't know, maybe they're the kind of people that say, hey, you know, we like where Ian's going with stuff. We know why you've been against him. Look, I understand Ian Flynn made himself known. Believe me, because I was there. I was a part of the Mobius Four. And it's during, uh, before Ian, Ian even came on board at Archie Comics. I know Ian was a part of that, part of that uh, message board. I know that. I understand that. I know he was a part of that message board. So yeah, it'd probably be understandable that a bunch of people that, and like I said, with all due respect to Ian and everything he's contributed, I, I do understand that maybe they want to suck up and kiss up to him because they enjoy what he's done. And hey, like I said, I don't have nothing against the guy. I understand he's trying to make things interesting. I understand he's trying to make things, you know, co- you know, you know, he's trying to get people to t- talk and all that. Well, he's doing a great job. He's getting people to talk. He's getting people to get concerned. I mean, I'm pretty sure that one fan over at the Sega forums, they point out the miscoloring or whatever miscoloring or artistic coloring of Sally's robotic body on the cover of 38 for Sonic Universe. Yeah, there's going to be concern for that because then they're going to think, what did. Because there are going to be a lot of fans that don't like what Ian's done. They're going to look at that and say, oh my God, what did Ian do? What did he write in? Did he allow Robotnik to switch, have have Sally, give Sally the ability to switch bodies or something like that? They They won't know. You see, initially, initially, what it is, ladies and gentlemen, it's like, again, and again, as the title says, I have no vendetta against Ian Flynn. The fact is, I'm just repeating what a lot of other concerned fans are saying. A lot of these concerned fans are not happy about the direction Ian has taken the comic and the characters. You know, they, they have no faith in the guy. They don't. In fact... I think it's Trost, like I said, Trost at the Saturday Morning Sonic Forms, you know, Trost is trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, so is Natalie, so is Laser X5, so is Miko, so is everybody that I mentioned at the beginning of this audio vid. They are just concerned. They, they don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, yeah, there are some like Laser X5 and Flyboy Fox and a few others out there, if not many others out there, that want Ian Flynn to be removed as the head writer and they want somebody else in there that's going to fix everything. You know, I can understand that from their standpoint because I will be honest. I'll be brutally honest with you. I'm not too happy. I'm not too thrilled about what he did to Sally either. But you know what? I'm one. You know, but you know what? The way I'm dealing with it it's real simple i'm not opening any of the issues that i get it with a doing my current subscription and as well as going into my renewed subscription that i would do in a few months i'm not going to be opening any of the issues and anytime i see the mecha sally design whether it's fan whether it's a fan art made whether it's fan made or it's on the cover of a comp of an issue i either try to quickly go by scroll by it by it And if not, after I look at it, I just switch over to the original artistic design of Sally and voila, there you go. It's completely, basically out of mind, out of sight. So yeah, I will be honest, I'm not too happy about what he did. But again, I'm just going to, I'm just staying out of it right now until things get settled. Yeah, I do read summaries. I do read reviews. I do read previews. Yes, I will admit that. But I'm just staying out of it right now until everything gets settled. Because I know, because I feel, because I know as a longtime fan, things like this don't happen. And if you don't believe me, listen to my comparison video of the Dark Phoenix saga to this current story arc. And you'll see what I mean. So, that's all I'm going to say, folks. Again, I have no, in closing, I'm letting you know I have no vendetta against Ian Flynn. So... Comment down below if you like, and y'all take care.